widespread floating trains, nuclear fusion, Marty McFly's hoverboard. He's on a hoverboard! It sounds like the future, but many scientists say these types of advances aren't as far away as we think. They all hinge on one thing, a room temperature ambient pressure superconductor. And in July, some scientists claimed to have found just that, sending stock prices for companies with a perceived connection to superconductors soaring. A breakthrough like this really could mean longer lasting batteries for our devices, revolutionizing medical imaging. It could mean more efficient electrical grids. It could mean improved high speed trains. There's almost no aspect of our daily life that a room temperature ambient pressure superconductor wouldn't touch if commercially applied. That's why investors, despite doubts surrounding the search, are still backing the effort. Here's where the science stands and what it could take to bring such a superconductor to market. When electricity flows from one place to another, it travels along some type of conductor, usually a metal. Those conductors put up some resistance, which results in some of the energy being lost as heat. That's why your phone or computer can get really warm. Superconductors eliminate that resistance and can transmit energy without loss. Superconductors, obviously, if they conduct electric current perfectly, it means they're extremely efficient. But these materials typically only work in extreme conditions, temperatures as cold as roughly negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit, or extremely high pressure. There's always an investment to do the necessary cryogenics. If you're using copper and it has a little bit of loss, but the superconductor is much more expensive, you know, for most of your applications, you might want to use a copper instead. Just because you have a superconductor, the question is whether it's going to be useful or not. Because of that, superconductors, as they exist today, are used in limited circumstances. For example, MRI machines. But there's also been investment in broader uses. The Departments of Energy and Homeland Security have funded initiatives to create more resilient power grids using superconducting cables, like one in Chicago that uses liquid nitrogen to keep cables cool. Ultimately, the reason why people are so interested in this space in terms of investment especially is because unlocking a room temperature and pressure superconductor, again, would revolutionize medical imaging. It would make it so that magnetically levitating trains were more accessible, cheaper to build, more efficient. It would make it so that our electrical grids truly would become revolutionized. Because superconductors potentially promise huge advances in technology, finding one that can work at room temperature and ambient pressure has become a holy grail for scientists and investors. A group led by scientists at the University of Rochester claimed to make a major breakthrough in March. A superconductor made of rare earth material combined with nitrogen and hydrogen that they said worked at roughly room temperature. The study was peer-reviewed, but the lead researcher has come under scrutiny. The University of Rochester-led group did not respond to requests for comment. Then two other papers, released in July, detailed a potential superconductor called LK99 that combined copper, lead, phosphorus, and oxygen, and worked at room temperature and ambient pressure. Videos of the substance floating above a magnet, a hallmark of superconductivity, circulated online. But those papers, written by researchers who mostly worked for the privately held Quantum Energy Research Center, haven't yet been peer-reviewed. And many scientists say LK99 is just a magnet, rather than a superconducting material. Many groups had difficulty replicating the experiment. The Quantum Energy Research Center didn't respond to requests for comment. Still, the enthusiasm for the July research triggered big stock swings for companies like Sunam, Mobis, and American Superconductor. Before a room temperature ambient pressure superconductor can be brought to market, it needs to be replicated regularly in trials. That's what Norman's group at Argonne National Laboratory is trying to do now with LK99. It's gonna sort of take a while to sort out what, what's actually going on there. It opens up the space, right? There's lots and lots of minerals out there, very few that have been studied from a physics perspective. Maybe there are other surprises out there waiting for us. Replicating results can take weeks or months, if even possible. Then its production needs to be scaled up, which can take much longer. It's one thing having little microscopic samples in your laboratory is another thing to, to make kilometer, you know, long wires. We just don't know. Until you know what the material is and how easy it is to make, and then it's like how, you know, can you, can you wrap it and make a wire out of it? 
until you know those things, it's, it's really hard uh, to, to figure out what kind of lag will be from discovery to applications. The superconductor cable system used for the power grid in Chicago took years and approximately $19 million to implement. Any discovery or invention or change in the field is ultimately net positive. So it, there, it's almost like a nothing to lose, everything to gain scenario. It's not like they have spent decades researching this, trying new recipes, and it has yielded no results. So it's perhaps just a matter of time.